Hey guys, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome to South American Giants at Tecton Zoo. The giant anteaters have moved into the habitat that we built last week. This week we're building an amazing habitat for giant otters with a bridge that allows them to walk over the guests. So we started this lower level of the otter habitat last week, just adding some finishing touches to it here. But what we're going to be doing today is building the big modernist structure that sits on top of this mini Machu Picchu that we made last week. So I'm just putting in the second of the water towers here and in the middle the plaster that's going across there that is going to be a bridge that allows the otters to walk in between their two pools above the heads of the guests as the guests walk underneath it to get into the next section of South American Giants. So I'm going to say straight away this is one oh ignore that kind of weird <laughs> figure on top of the water tower that was a little experiment that uh, did not make it but yeah I'm gonna say straight away this is one of my favorite ever builds I am so happy with how this turned out um, it was pretty complex to make trying to get the bridge to work the pools to work getting the otters up from this level down here up onto the um, the top level where the guests can see them swimming underwater but I'm really happy with how it turned out uh, and this here is the first thing that you come to. So the giant anteaters will be on the right. And on the left, I'm making a um, implied exhibit for agoutis, which are these little South American uh, rodents. Uh, well, by rodent standards, they're quite big. Um, actually, I don't even know if they are rodents. Maybe they're just related to them. Not 100% sure. I uh, really should have checked that before I made this video, <laughs> but um, they are very cute. Uh, I've seen them in zoos before, um, as you probably have done as well. Uh, so I'm making a little implied exhibit for them here with some rock work based on an old Incan ruin that I was looking at. And uh, if we get any more South American animals, then this may stop being an implied exhibit. Um, especially if we get anything small. I think I mentioned last week, if we get any um, small South American monkeys, I wanna use them. These are absolutely amazing. These little boxes are from a blueprint that I would highly recommend you download from the workshop made by the brilliant leader. He made it for his Fennec Fox episode uh, and it's just got so many amazing pieces in it. I'd highly recommend you download it even if you're not gonna use it for them because those little nest boxes are absolutely perfect and I've checked them out. They're made of about a billion pieces. <laughs> so certainly not something I'm gonna be making myself. Anyway, onto the main part of the build. So this is the first of the two water tanks. Classic sort of modernist construction with the curves, sweeping curves and then the long straight lines as well. Um, this has got a underwater feeder in it to give the otters a reason to come in here. So they've got a little pool on the terraces below that they can uh, splash about in. But this is the first of the main swimming areas. It's nice and deep. Uh, I can't remember how tall I built it, but it's, uh, it's pretty tall. There's a lot of swimming space. And then we're gonna put paths in around it so that the guests can see the otters underwater and they'll be swimming when they're diving, they'll be pretty much at eye level and they can also see them from underneath if they're at the top of the water. And then I'm going to build another one here, exactly the same, and fill this with water. And they're going to need even further encouragement to get over to that one because they've already had access to water. So this one's got enrichment items and uh, underwater feeder in it as well. And then we join the two habitats together Normally you would then delete the sections in between this pathway, which lets the game know that this is all one habitat. So you don't get any notices about escapes and things like that, but these are holding water, so I can't get rid of them. But if you just mark them as not habitat barriers, like I'm doing uh, there, then um, it will all count as one habitat. And um, because the plaster that they're gonna walk over is a long way above the height of the guests, the guests aren't gonna feel like they're actually inside the enclosure, which is uh, an issue you can have. Uh, so they're not gonna run away screaming. They're gonna happily walk underneath it. When I finished it, you can actually see the otters from underneath that bridge as well. Hence the sky bridge name. Going back to the water towers, I'm gonna make some further improvements and start working on the next part of the building, which is the middle part. So I do a lot of sort of looking at it from the other side of the 
habitat so that we can make sure that the heights are correct and then it all looks the way that I want it to look. And now we're going to start building the bridge itself. So that plaster that is in there at the moment is literally just there so I can get an idea of the height and to make sure that the habitat works we're going to replace it now with some proper plaster pieces and the glass floor so that the otters can be seen from underneath. And while I finish that off, let's talk about update 1.9. This was literally announced uh, about 10 minutes before I started recording this. There's going to be some really cool new features in there. Uh, I won't go through all of them, but the ones I am most excited about, the uh, free roaming camera mode, the first person camera, actually enabling you to see your zoo from the guest perspective properly. I think we're all thoroughly sick of Tegid Cam by now. Um, it would be great to have a, a proper option to do that. They introduced that in Jurassic World Evolution 2 um, maybe a month ago and as soon as they did that I was very much hoping that that would be brought into Planet Zoo so really looking forward to using that. We've got a load of new water options, Flexicolor exhibit water, um, the ability for animals to bathe in shallow water which is cool, new behaviours are always good to get in the game. Um, and presumably to go with that they're improving the terrain tools so that it's easier to create um, sort of smaller height variations um, that's my interpretation of it anyway it's called a flattened terrace brush which is uh, great timing uh, <laughs> a week after I spent hours building the terraces for our little Machu Picchu here they've added a terrace brush into the game so um, shame that didn't come out a little bit earlier but still uh, and finally they're adding the ability for some of the smaller animals to burrow namely the meerkats and the prairie dogs um, that is going to be great I love the burrowing feature for the aardvarks so our meerkats here in Tecton Zoo will be able to enjoy their burrows as well which is brilliant so back to the otter sky bridge this part of the building here I'm just putting a base in and then I'm going to fill this structure with mulch because we're going to have a sky garden here um, so it might look a little strange having trees this high up but I did my research <laughs> and apparently this would hold enough soil to um, have a coconut palm in it uh, and then I sort of ignored my research and added another couple of coconut palms because <laughs> I really like the symmetry of how they look but it isn't as far away from reality as it might uh, might appear uh, we're going to put all sorts of other plants in here as well. I think it looks um, really cool from sort of the perspective of where the guests are going to be entering this area to have this sky garden up here and then the bridge for the otters underneath it. Uh, just notice what a nice pattern that, uh, that mulch made as well, but I cover that up. Um, no one's going to see up here. This is just where the trees are going to be planted um, and this will be raised. Uh, and there you go, we put the trees in here. It's going to be quite striking got a lot more foliage to put in like I say to make it look a bit more uh, planted up rather than just three random trees sprouting out the top of the building um, and then it's on to the sign so the South American Giants I was tempted with this to make a custom billboard sign and I still might have some at the front of the area because I've not really done too much of that in this zoo but I want one of my normal Noto Sands signs up here um, which is going to wrap around the curve of the building. Always a bit of a pain to do because you have to do each letter manually to get the uh, to get the angle right and make sure it's sunk in correctly. But it looks so good when it's done because uh, it really looks like it's part of the building rather than just a sign that's been uh, stuck on there. And once that's done, we'll finish off the rest of the structure, get the um, supports a lot more substantial so the building looks like it would stand. Always important and then we'll do a load of decorating with some vines and moss and decals uh, and just make it look a bit more lived in and a bit more realistic. The area that you can see behind here is the final, for the moment, depending on what new animals they introduce, but for the moment the final area of South American Giants uh, and that is another area that I'm very excited about. It's going to be a huge habitat for jaguar um, and it's going to be based on two separate Inca ruins that I've seen, um, not Machu Picchu. Um, so we're sort of combining three different ruins together here, uh, but it, they look absolutely amazing. And if I can pull it off, uh, then that is going to be a very good addition to the zoo. So these are the vines that I was talking about. Uh, I'm going to put these across the majority of the structure. 
I'm using a mixture of vines and the Spanish moss, which I think looks really nice. I'm not sure I've mixed those two before, but I think it's a really nice effect. Um, and it's if you follow this zoo, then you know one of my favorite things is combining pure white concrete with foliage. And this is a great excuse to do that. Putting some larger vines in as well. I'm doing something a bit sneaky here for the first time, I think, in this zoo. I need donation bins or the zoo's gonna go broke, but I hate how they look in this particular area. So I've hidden some in the walls, which is pretty tricky because you need to have a wall that is right up against the path, which I don't normally have, but happily I do here. So I've just hidden those in there. And then we're gonna add in one of our staff pods because this area is gonna have its own dedicated staff because it's pretty sizable. Um, few tiny improvements to the agoutis and then finally we're gonna finish off the ground level of the main exhibit and we will be done so I want a seating area here so that the guests can sit down and look up at the otters if they're on the sky bridge so I'm gonna do something which I saw in Kowali Zoo absolutely ages ago and I've never done which is to hide one of the in-game benches and then cover it up with your own design and then the guests will actually sit on this little custom bench that you've made. I'm hoping this works, I've not seen it yet, I uh, haven't had any guests make it up this far because um, there's no reason for them to walk under this structure yet because there's nothing else to get to in the zoo. We'll put some of the new gondola cushions on for the seating area and that is the Otter Skybridge complete. Stick around for the cinematics and I will see you soon for the final part of South American Giants. Thanks for watching. Bye.